Welcome once again to uh, the breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. Let's now move uh, to, uh, well, way back to the year 2012. It was on this day in history that Nigeria, um, well, woke up to one of the really, really sad stories of another plane crash. This time it was a Dana Air crash um, that occurred on this day. Um, it was Dana Air 992, Dana Air Flight 992 that was carrying 100 and 53 people on board and crashed in a residential neighborhood in Lagos, killing everyone on board and 10 people on ground. It was a scheduled domestic commercial flight from Abuja to Lagos. On the 3rd of June, the plane, an MD-83 aircraft serving the route, crashed into buildings in Lagos while attempting an emergency landing, killing all 153 on board. It departed Abuja at 2.58 local time and was cleared to flight level 260. At this point, the flight was uh, still normal. 17 minutes after taking off from Abuja, the crew noticed an abnormality in the left engine and started to discuss the problem. The captain stated that the first uh, officer um, and he should, could figure out the cause of the problem by themselves and declared the, the engineer's help was not needed. But about 3.31 uh, local time, the crew finally declared that there was no throttle response um, that was happening from the engine. The MD-83 crashed in the Iju Ishaga neighborhood near the airport with its tail section, first of all, striking an uncompleted building. Two trees and three other ground structures were also struck. The plane then exploded, consumed by its own 8,000 um, LB of um, fuel. It was, of course, a very chaotic crash scene. Um, sadly, of course, none of the people on board survived. Water trucks commandeered from neighbor, a nearby construction project had difficulties also reaching the site due to narrow roads. Um, the federal government, of course, in response to this, seized the license and banned the MD-83 aircraft used by Dana Aircraft, Dana Air rather, after the crash. It, it was a really, really sad day for Nigeria, and it, it um, uh, was a reminder of, you know, other incidents that we've also um, 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 had in the past, uh, the Soso Liso and, and the likes. Um, good thing is that, in, you know, in the last couple of years, aside, of course, the army aircraft and the fighter jets, you know, that have, well, one of them is still missing, um, that have crashed, you know, we've not really, or oh, sadly also the uh, chief of army staff also died in a plane, you know, a crash, but we, uh, we've not had a passenger plane uh, crash in Nigeria in a, in a while. So, um, for what it's worth, you know, I think we should also give kudos to the um, Ministry of Aviation and Ministry of Aviation for being able to ensure that we maintain certain standards um, to, to prevent air disasters in Nigeria. And we hope that it lasts forever. I don't want to say for a long time because I don't even want it to ever happen, happen again um, in Nigeria. It's a, it's a really sad story that very Sunday people leave in Abuja to Lagos, and this happened. I, I can't imagine if, you know, families of those affected have been able to get over this incident. Just such a sad and shocking situation. 153 people. Well, uh, 163, if you had to take people on ground. On ground, yes. Uh, who woke up that morning to go about their daily, you know, lives, and, you know, by 3 o'clock there was, you know, a crisis. Um, well... Once again, it's, a, it's really, really sad, but once again, kudos to the Nigerian Aviation um, uh, Ministry for being able to ensure that we continue to maintain safety standards that prevent any type of you know, air, air passenger air disaster. Uh, we sadly, of course, we mentioned, you know, like I also already has said, mm -hmm. the um, military airplanes who, you know, that have also crashed in the last, uh, you know, um, a long while, including the chief of army staff who died in, a, you know, in an air crash and um, 10 other officers. Um, so... Our um, hearts go out to them. But that was hap uh, so it happened on this day in history on the, in the year 2012. Yes, and, the th and on the 3rd of June 2015, there was an even bigger casualty figure in Ghana. What happened on this day in history was a, an explosion at a fueling station. So it was a rainy day, there was flood, and people had packed their cars at this fueling station. Lots of pedestrians had just gone to the fueling station to take shelter from the rain, waiting for the rain to, you know, stop and so they can go about their, their business. And the lights went off in the filling station, the lights came back on, and there was an explosion. Over 200, about 200 people, over 200 people died. And because the filling station was built on a waterway and it was raining, there was flood, some of the fuel spilled 
you know, into the water. And because of that, the explosion spread, burnt neighboring buildings, just caused lots of destructions, burnt cars, 200 people died and more. You know, the president, yeah, John, John Mahama at the time, he visited the site. He called for, you know, three days of mourning over the losses that occurred on that day, you know, in June 2015. He also authorized about um, 60 million Ghana CDs, or equivalent to $14.5 million for a recovery fund. And they began to push a legislation to prevent building on waterways so that such accidents would not happen again. That was in this in history that a, a, an explosion at a gas station in Accra, Ghana, killed over 200 people. Yeah. Um, bringing it down here to Nigeria, we, of course, have had our own petrol uh, fire disasters. If you remember, I think the biggest one has to be the Jesse one in 98, uh, that more than, more than a thousand people died. But, you know, there's a difference here. You know, the Ghana, Ghanaian one was a um, um, power, you know, error, electricity or something that caused that um, explosion. Um, ours, of course, was, you know, because Nigerians, you know, seen a, a, a bust uh, pipeline went to start scooping petrol. Um, which, of course, led to um, the explosion. And more than a 1,000 people died on that day, 1998. There's also been the Jaconde one, where uh, cars you know, were burnt. This, this was, I think, was yeah. sometime last year. Um, Jaconde Bridge, that's what it's called, yes. Uh, <laughs> where, you know, of course, uh, cars were burnt. So we, we, of course, need to continue to do, to well, um, do better to improve on um, the response to fire disasters in Nigeria. Uh, yes, you're speaking about Ghana, but... Um, we should also continue to learn from some of these things that we share. Um, that's why I gave kudos to the Nigerian Aviation Ministry. But it's, it's a constant reminder to continue to improve and continue to learn and do better with regards to our response to disasters. Um, NEMA, uh, Nigerian um, uh, Fire Service, uh, generally in every state. The uh, building structures, uh, market structures, um, all of that needs to continue to be improved. In every market, there should be proper... Um, pathways and driveways for emergency situations. If there's a fire in the market, how many trucks can drive into Ladipo or go drive into any big market in, in Lagos now and get to the deepest part of the market? That are usually to, very crowded. Yeah, and get yeah. to the deepest part of the market to, to um, ensure that they, they get there in time to save property and to save lives. How many of these markets across Nigeria, not just in Lagos, across Nigeria, um, a lot of them are choked. A lot of them don't have any actual proper driveways. And it's really, really sad. Um, how, um, how much better have we done with regards uh, proper fire um, uh, response equipment in the markets? How many stores are fire extinguishers? Um, how many people can use fire extinguishers? So there's, there's a lot of these angles that we should look at. Yeah, but this happened in 2015. Yes, 2015. All right. That's all we have for you today in history, 2012 and 2015 in Nigeria and in Ghana. We're moving into our first major conversation for today. What's happening with our courts? A Jusun strike still on? Lawyers frustrated? Uh, of course, uh, suspects and those who have been charged to court still also uh, having to you know, wait a lot longer before they can get justice um, through our uh, legal system. We'll talk about that right after the short break. <music> 